dreaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this maze our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us, sing the lost and forsaken. Gather us, sing the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. God, our creator, who gives birth to the entire universe of creation in love, and of the word of God, who came among us in Jesus to embody God's love and forgiveness for us all, and of the wisdom of God, who weaves the evolving web of life, revealing her wisdom through the many different voices of creation. May the grace and peace of our creator God, who loves us, forgives us, and sends us on a challenging prophetic mission. Be with you all. Amen. How shall we know God? How shall we know God's dream for us? Is God's dream in the sky? Who then can travel into the sky, beyond the clouds, beyond the moon, beyond the stars, to find God for us, so that we may know what God dreams for us. For it is such a long way even to the moon, and to travel to the edge of even our own galaxy would take us many lifetimes. Crossing two million light years takes a very long time. And what if God is even farther away, beyond other galaxies? With two trillion galaxies in the known universe, we might be searching for a long time. But our God says, no, it is not in the sky so that you need to wonder who will go up to the sky and bring it down to us so that we might hear it. Perhaps then, God's dream for us is across the sea. Well, we know what is across the sea. We live in a global world and we know that people who live across the sea are not so different from us. Perhaps then in the depths of the sea, who then will travel down, down, to the very bottom of the sea, to find God's dream and bring it back for us? To do that, they would need a special vehicle that could withstand the extreme pressure of being beneath so many millions of gallons of water. Humans have a few small vehicles that can travel about three miles down into the ocean, but only twice have humans managed to travel to the very bottom of the deepest part of the ocean about six miles down, and they couldn't stay long. This might be another impossible journey. But our God says, no, it is not beyond the seas that you need to wonder who will cross the seas for us and bring it back to us. Where then can we find God? Where can we find God's dream for us? To what faraway place must we travel? Can it truly be that God's dream is closer to us than our very selves? That it is in the flower on our doorsteps, the bird song coming through the windows, in the breeze that stirs a leaf and stirs a yearning in our hearts to know and be known? Can it be that we breathe God's breath in every inhale, drink God in through every raindrop? Can we see the familiar in the eyes of another knowing our God is in that person, too. Could it be that God's dream is in the song in our hearts, the energy that guides our footsteps, the light that illuminates our vision? Our God says, 
My dream is, in fact, very near to you, in your heart, so that you may live it. Let us pray. Loving God, your ways are not our ways. For your kindness is lavished equally upon all, something that is difficult for many of us to accept. Help us learn to recognize and welcome your mercy toward others, even as we hope to know your mercy ourselves. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Most High God called to the man, Where are you? I heard the sound of you in the garden, replied the man. I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Who told you that you were naked? The creator asked. Have you been eating of the tree whose fruit I forbade you to eat? The man replied, it was the woman you put me with. She gave me the fruit and I ate it. Then God asked the woman, what is this you have done? The woman replied, the serpent tempted me and I ate. Then God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are accursed. Lower than the cattle, lower than the wild beasts. You will crawl on your belly and eat dust every day of your life. I will make you enemies of each other, you and the woman, your offspring and her offspring. Her offspring will crush your head, and your offspring will strike hers in the heel. The Word of God. A Proclamation of Psalm 104.
Our second reading is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. But as we have the same spirit of faith that is mentioned in Scripture, I believed and therefore I spoke. We too believe and therefore we too speak, knowing that God who raised Jesus to life will raise us with Jesus in our turn and place both you, us and you in Christ's presence. You see, all this is for your benefit, so that the more grace is multiplied among people, the more thanksgiving there will be to the glory of God. That is why we do not lose heart. And though this physical self of ours may be falling into decay, the inner self is renewed day by day. These light and momentary troubles train us to carry the weight of an eternal glory, which will make these troubles insignificant by comparison. And we have no eyes for things that are visible, but only for things that are invisible. Visible things last only for a time. The invisible are eternal. For we know that when the tent that we live in on earth is folded up, there is waiting for us a house built by God, an everlasting home not made by human hands in the heavens. The Word of God. Please rise in body or spirit for the gospel. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came home with his disciples. Again, the crowd gathered, making it impossible for them even to eat. When his relatives heard of this, they set out to seize him, for they said, he is out of his mind. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of, dem of demons, he drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder the house. And then I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of every lasting sin. They had said, he has an unclean spirit. His mother and his brothers arrived. 
standing outside, they sent word to him and called him. A crowd seated around him told him, your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. But he said to them in reply, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those seated in the circle, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The good news of the Lord. Even back when Jesus was with us, his teachings were not popular to the insiders, those who felt comfortable and safe in their religious tradition. The poor and the outcasts, however, loved what Jesus said and how he said it, because he reached out to them in love and care. Now, any who feel the Spirit is leading them in a way that does not follow the usual terms and ideas is thought of as out of line. If we are sincerely trying to be open to God's Spirit, we will find ourselves being led to unexpected places and situations, a lot of which we would not choose of ourselves. And so it has always been. This is especially the case with religious traditions that require some uniformity, as the temple system in Jesus' day and some traditions in our own day. Thinking outside the box is not looked upon kindly by the system or its self-appointed enforcers. We only need to look at how Bishop Tom Gubbleton was treated for his witness. And this is happening today all around us. And people are hurting, being hurt, and causing hurt. There is a lot of nasty stuff going on around us these days. Angry polarization both in our country and in our church. In-groups claim to decide who is in and who is out. Jesus' message that everybody is welcome in God's kingdom is really denied by many, especially with our LGBTQ plus sisters and brothers. Pride Month has generated a lot of hatred and anger as well as a great deal of loving support. Few of us have any impact on the world situation, but we have great impact on our own situation. The only way to deal with all this stuff that is going on is to do our best to be fully open to the spirit in our everyday living. Jesus promised to send the Spirit to remind us of what he taught. In other words, the Spirit offers us insight as to how we are being called to live as disciples of Jesus in our here and now, in all that is going on, in the midst of all the commotion. Asking for and being open to and willing to accept the Spirit's wisdom and guidance is an absolute necessity especially with the current commotion and polarization in our own country, in our own church. In my own life, I have found the Ignatian examiner to be a great help in this. As Pope Francis said today, like the wind that cannot be bridled, bottled up, or put in a box, the Holy Spirit cannot be reduced to concepts definitions, theses, or treatises. Nor can it be enclosed within canons, institutions, or definition. The spirit creates and animates institutions but cannot be institutionalized. The only way we can serve and minister in all this is to live open to the spirit let her enlighten the eyes of our hearts 
If we try to do anything just by ourselves, we'll end up adding to the problem. It cannot be about us, our sense of sanctif our sense of satisfaction. Only about us doing our best to be open to the spirit in everything, willing to be led and willing to be surprised. As we go in a friendly time, why don't we just look at the last couple of days in our lives, our own living, our own choices, our own values. Is there anything we might find that we're holding on to that really isn't where we want to be or where we want to go? Can we trust enough the Spirit to say, take me where you want me to go. Let me meet who you want me to meet. Let me do what you want me to do and say what you want me to say. And keep me out of your way. If I start in a direction that is not of you, Lord, I ask you please to stop me. Now let us pray for our own needs and the needs of all creation. For our country, in this difficult time of national violence, racism, anger, and polarization, we ask for the wisdom, compassion, and courage to respond to grace and live as Jesus shows us. We pray. For any among us who feel afraid, lonely, or who are hurting in any way, May God's spirit be with them and comfort them, perhaps even through us. For an end to the increasing violence wherever and however it is happening, and for all who are as innocent victims, we pray. For people suffering mental anguish and emotional turmoil, may each of us surrender to the light of Abba's love, and so serve those who need us most, we pray. In the quiet of our hearts, let us raise up our own intention for which we would pray. Loving Father, Jesus teaches us your love and mercy are beyond anything we can imagine. We hear this today in a setting that is painful for so many of your people and so distant from your gospel and example. Jesus shows us you love each of us beyond all understanding. You call us to be forgiving and loving. You share with others the love and forgiveness we know from you. The national polarization and violence which can very well destroy us are terrifying. Many cannot or will not hear your message and some react in anger when it is spoken. Help us to grow in our life and thinking that we would not expect to be open to your spirit, offering to guide us, perhaps in directions we would not of ourselves choose. We know that your love happens when we take the chance to be open to your grace. We ask again what it means for us here and now to live as your disciples. We see your loving care happening all around us, sometimes in dramatic and courageous ways, but mostly in simple, ordinary smiles and acts of kindness. May we be open to your grace, however you come to us, to live your healing with the many among us who are hurting. We ask the courage to do whatever it is you call us to do, for we are all in this together, 
and we know that you are with us in ways we do not expect. For all that is now, we thank you. Amen. Let us pray together. Most loving God, we thank you for our calling and for nurturing each one of us at our disciples' hearts, a heart that rejoices in your promptings, a heart sustained by your spirit, and a heart encouraged by the support and love of our fellow children of God. God, you offer us new beginnings. Fill us with confidence in our work. May our efforts extend beyond the threshold of our homes, out through the servant's entrance to a world so desperately in need of hope and healing. 
dream your dream in us, that in this house church, your vision and direction will take shape in us, and we will be transformed by your spirit. May your presence and what we do encourage us to dare, and may solidarity and togetherness be our strength. We make this prayer in your name, with Jesus the Christ and your Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Maureen and Augie from Sanibel Island, Florida. Please join in our closing song, City of God. <laughs> 